Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight for 23 ABC News at 6. I'm Jessica Harrington. Tonight's top stories. The sheriff speaking out addressing non essential businesses that are refusing to close. What the sheriff says could happen if those business owners do not follow the governor's executive orders and guidelines. And local bars, meanwhile, trying to figure out how they can survive the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. A look at how they're getting by and their hopes for the future. 23 ABC News at 6 starts right now. Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News at 6 starts now. Good evening. We begin tonight with the latest update from the Kern County Sheriff's Office. KCSO confirming that several deputies have tested positive for the coronavirus. According to KCSO, they could not confirm at this time whether the deputies were detention deputies or patrol deputies. KCSO officials said it is up to public health to determine if any other employees would need to isolate. KCSO said its deputies are outfitted with N95 masks and they're following guidelines from health officials. Meanwhile, Bakersfield Congressman Kevin McCarthy blasted the Bureau of Prisons today for continuing to remove inmates from the Taft Correctional Institution amid the COVID-19 outbreak. More than 100 in inmates were transferred to other prisons last week, and Taft City officials said at the time they wanted the transfers delayed due to concerns surrounding the coronavirus. The Taft Mayor Dave Noer saying last week, quote, to start moving 1,100 inmates all of a sudden in the midst of all of it, it makes no sense. I'm quite surprised and disappointed. The Taft Correctional Institution is scheduled to close April 30th. Officials have said when the prison closes, more than 300 employees will lose their jobs. Today, Congressman Kevin McCarthy released the following statement about the Bureau of Prisons continued removal of inmates from the Taft Correctional Institution, saying in part, quote, I find it appalling and irresponsible that the BOP continued this week to move hundreds of inmates out of TCI to other BOP institutions across the nation. These actions directly contradict guidance from the White House Corona virus task force and the CDC, along with a BOP directive to limit inmate movement. These actions also jeopardize the health and safety of the inmates and employees at the TCI. To read McCarthy's full statement, be sure to head to our website, turn to 23.com. Meanwhile, at another local prison facility, Lairdo jail officials tell us they're making sure their inmates are safe. They're taking inmates temperatures and making sure they are wearing face masks on intake. They say when an inmate is booked at the central receiving facility, they are wearing a mask and stop at a nursing station before entering all to prevent the spread of COVID-19 inside Lairdo jail. We want to turn now to the update on local coronavirus case numbers from public health today, seeing yet another jump in the number of people testing positive for COVID-19 and the announcement of a second death related to COVID-19. So far, more than 4,500 tests have been administered here in Kern County, with 1,800 still pending. Here's a look at the latest breakdown of positive and negative test results. There are 199 total people who have tested positive for coronavirus in Kern County. 194 of those are residents and five are non-residents. There's been two deaths reported so far, but the good news is nearly 2,500 tests for the virus have come back negative. And here's a breakdown of the cases by region in Kern County. According to Public Health, there are 86 positive cases in Bakersfield West, the largest amount of all the regions so far, 60 in Bakersfield East, 36 in the Valley region, five in the desert and seven in the mountain region. New information tonight from the sheriff. Sheriff Donnie Youngblood posting another video message on social media, this time addressing non-essential businesses that are remaining open during the pandemic. Youngblood explaining what could happen to business owners not following the rules. A public health officer issues you a notice to close or comes to see you and tells you you must close, please close. If not, I will have to come out and write you a citation and it's a misdemeanor, it, it's got a fine and jail time, and you probably would lose your business license in the future. So what we're asking you to do is please help us flatten the curve. Youngblood also addressed the need for the public to not call the department on minor crimes. He stressed the importance of filing online reports for minor incidents and showed how to do it. He said it's vital to not have deputies responding to minor incidents in person. If something can be investigated without physical contact, it's safer for the department and the community. As many non-essential businesses have shut down due to the coronavirus, local bar owners are explaining more about the new challenges they are facing to maintain revenue. 23 ABC's Tori Cooper spoke to some owners. She joins us live from downtown with how they're managing during the pandemic. Tori. 
Yeah, I'm here in downtown Bakersfield where I'm standing right in front of the Alley Cat Bar where the owner of more than 40 years tells 23 ABC News that by far the hardest part about this pandemic is maintaining paying his employees while his doors are closed and his employees are no longer working here. But other bar owners I did have a chance to speak with say that the secret to maintaining revenue for their business is getting creative in their approach. It's a bar in downtown Bakersfield that has been open for more than 40 years. I just hope we let the Alley Cat can survive it. But now Alley Cat bar owner Kenny Reed says the future for his bar and his veteran employees is uncertain in light of the coronavirus pandemic. I wish that I didn't have to close. Reed says following the executive order from Governor Gavin Newsom that demanded all non-essential businesses close voluntarily, Reed closed his bar because he says he knows it's the right thing to do. I certainly understand that if the bar owner is terrified at the economics of the situation. Reed says he is lucky enough to already own his building in downtown Bakersfield, so he no longer has the burden of paying rent, but with no money coming in. And the real challenge, you know, I can only afford to pay my employees for so long. In the meantime, he's encouraging his employees to seek additional assistance through unemployment, but other pub and grill owners like Rebecca and Eric Giddens of the Kern River Brewing Company in Kernville say they are taking advantage of a new temporary measure passed by the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control to stay afloat. We just launched uh, an online uh, beer delivery store. Their new online delivery store can be found at currentriverbrewing.com. And according to the ABC, California pubs and restaurants like these can now sell beer, wine, mixed drinks, or cocktails as long as they have a secured lid or cap without a hole for sipping or straw, and as long as it's sold with food. The state has also lifted its ban on alcohol sold at drive through windows. Not just packaged beer in cans, but, you know, beer in other containers like growlers. Despite their new website, social media push, and their statewide distribution of their local Kern County brew, the Giddens say their sales are still down 75% and they have had to lay off several of their employees. Yeah, there's not a lot of money coming in, so we have to do with what we have, and a lot of it is, is relying on our community. Now, the Giddens say that on a daily basis, they are taking recommendations from their customers to ensure that they can better serve them during this pandemic. And they hope that by sharing their methods and their story, they can hopefully help the other business owners in the community who have been struggling during this time. But for now, in downtown Bakersfield, I'm Tori Cooper for 23 ABC News connecting you. Thanks, Tori. Well, it was such a nice day across Kern County. We were seeing those temperatures right on track with seasonal and those clear blue skies. And I'm telling you, you're going to want to enjoy these conditions before wet weather arrives as we head into early next week. But right now, those temperatures are holding on to the upper 60s across the valley, still in the 70s in some desert locations, but dipping down into the 40s in the South Mountains. This evening is going to be very nice to head out for a walk, 65 degrees at 7 p.m. and that sunset is at 719 this evening. But we are tracking a storm system moving into Northern California on Saturday. That one is not going to be impacting us, but we are going to be seeing those showers and rain to start Sunday afternoon, continuing into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, potentially even Thursday of next week. So like I said, you are going to want to enjoy that good air quality and spring like weather tomorrow before wet weather returns as we head into next week. I have more details on just how cold the storm system will be coming up next. The CIF made their official decision today for our local spring sports teams. 23 ABC's Carrie Osep has more on the decision that was expected. Carrie. Yeah, hey Jess, it's an all around tough day for our Kern County athletes as it became official that the spring sports season has officially been canceled. And that was told by us by the CIF. They released something around 2 p.m. today. This was an announcement we've been waiting for for a couple weeks. And as we heard that schools would be shutting down for the rest of the school year, we had anticipated this for our athletes. But of course, from the athletes from the Kern Valley softball Bronx to the Frontier Titans baseball team to a Garces track and field athlete to the Liberty track and field teams. It's been a whirlwind for these teams that started the year off hoping that they could follow suit and get to postseason and make some historic or make some history with their teams, but instead now they're trying to come to terms with their season ending prematurely. An all around emotional day as Kern County athletes accept the fact that they won't be returning to their sport this season. We were hoping to get back into the playoffs this year and just like win league and everything. And we thought we had a pretty good team, but now we won't 
really get to see that. It like hit me like in like a different spot in my heart, and it kind of made me want to be like now looking back on it. I mean, some guys are probably regretting not playing baseball or not doing what they could have done. You know, everyone else in the country is in the same boat. There are kids who are never throw again that can't throw, and you're at least blessed to be able to throw longer in your career. So it's it's been hard. It's been really rough. I was really looking forward to this year. I thought it would be a big breakout year for me in track, but it is what it is. I, I've kind of come to terms with it. I've dealt with it, and I'm just looking forward to whatever comes next. There are many of those athletes they are never going to compete again. This is probably it for a lot of them. So it's a memory lost. Um, you know, when you get four years of high school, and they say how fast it goes, and you lose one of those years, at least from a track perspective, you know, it makes it pretty tough. While Chris and Zach know they have more seasons to play, Arian is one of those athletes who played her final competitive game without even knowing it. I just take that like every moment is a gift and not um, given to everyone. I'm just trying to be grateful for the games that we did get to play preseason already and just um, keep my head up even though our season is over. All athletes recognizing the lesson of not taking anything for granted. When I get back out there, it's going to be very emotional, I can already tell, because I'm already an emotional person when I pitch. So I think it's going to be a game full of emotions, not just for me, but for anyone who's on the field with me. So talking to a lot of athletes and coaches during this time, of course, that's kind of the silver lining for them is maybe when these athletes get back onto the field or get back to competing, they'll know that they're playing for a whole new level of motivation and inspiration, knowing that things were taken from them this season. But of course, it's still hard to come to terms as a sports reporter too. It's been tough not covering these athletes, but we'll still try to share their stories. And if you guys have any great stories out there, please let us know. We want to highlight and spotlight a lot of these Kern County seniors who saw their seasons come to an end. But that will do it for me. For 23 ABC Sports, I'm Kariosa. I'll send it back to you.